Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about some technical topics to look out for for 2022. Please note that this is not representative of all the technical topics that will be out there for 2022. For example, drilling automation is going to be an honorable mention that I'll, me that I'll just say right now, but that I don't mention right now for one of the technical topics for 2022 because that is not my area of expertise. However, the other topics I will talk about I have some knowledge about more or less that I can brief you on, and this will be a pretty short presentation. As usual, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Now let's get started with the presentation. The first topic I'll talk about is induced seismicity. There have been lots of recent reports on induced seismicity and recent earthquakes in the Permian Basin for the past couple of months, and this will carry on over to 2022. And I'll give you some brief snippets of news reports. Railroad Commission of Texas has suspended all disposal well permits to inject oil and gas waste into deep strata within the portion of the Permian Basin following a series of earthquakes. The action taken in December and early and effective Friday applies to 33 deep disposal wells within the boundaries of Gar the Gardendale Seismic Response Area, or the SRA. There's some sources for you to check out to take a deeper dive into the topic of induced seismicity that I've listed below. Feel free to reach out to me so I can send you some of these sources as well. The next part I want to talk about is CCUS and CCS, or Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage. So CCUS technologies involve the capture of carbon dioxide from fuel combustion or industrial processes, the transport of the CO2 via ship or pipeline, and either its use as a resource to create valuable products or services in its permanent storage deep underground and geological formations. CCUS technologies also provide the foundation for carbon removal or negative emissions when the CO2 comes from bio-based processes or directly from the atmosphere. There's also a potential for tax breaks, and I have some snippets from the Journal of Petroleum Technology. Both Kinder Morgan and Occidental see a change ahead, but now Kinder is focusing more on a financially manageable challenge than building the carbon dioxide pipeline network which, that will be needed if the carbon capture vision is to achieve reality. Last year, it brought Kinetrex, which produces renewable natural gas by upgrading the methane emitted from landfills, as well as capturing a significant amount of CO2. It plans to rapidly expand the concept using biogas to create liquefied natural gas to power trucks and sell the CO2. By capturing these two sources of greenhouse gases created from the area's rotting garbage, the company will garner multiple tax benefits. I also listed a couple sources below for you to take a deeper dive on the CCUS topic, but this will definitely be something that will be in consistent discussion for 2022, especially in reduction of methane emissions and how to capture those uh, CO2 emissions. The next topic I'll talk about is a continuation of fractural driven interactions. There's evidence that's also building that the initial parent well may be suffering from fracturing fluids that are incompatible or overly reactive with the formation. Again, this problem is to believe most common in the Oklahoma and Montney formations. There's also going to be a continuation of the conversation of sealed wellbore pressure monitoring, which was introduced in 2020. So here is an introduction of sealed wellbore pressure monitoring for you to keep a closer look on, as well as a briefing of what exactly it is. It's performed on a well that acts as a closed system. The well cannot be connected to a formation through perforations or other types of access points. Casing must be sealed. Uncompleted wells can be used if the shallowest perforations are isolated from the formation. In an existing producing well, a plug must be set above the shallowest perforations to create a closed system from the top of the plug to the surface where the pressure measurement is recorded. The wellbore should be filled up with low compressibility fluid to amplify the pressure response created during monitoring. Fractures intersecting the sealed wellbore cause a local deformation, which results in a small volume reduction in the closed system or the system where the fluid volume is inside the casing, and generates a discernible and distinct pressure response. Pressure can be recorded either using a surface gauge or downhole gauge, and multiple sealed wellboards can be used as monitor wells for a single treatment well, allowing for a more detailed understanding of fracture growth rates during stimulation. 
I have a couple sources below for you to take a deeper dive on sealed wellbore pressure monitoring and just continuing the conversation of fracture-driven interactions, which I consistently talk about on this YouTube channel. The last topic I want to talk about is geothermal energy. It's the heat within the earth. The word geothermal comes from the Greek word geo or earth and therm, heat. Geothermal energy is a renewable energy source because heat is continuously produced inside the earth. People use geothermal heat for bathing, to heat buildings, and to generate electricity. And there are multiple reservoir and completions engineering applications from oil and gas to geothermal energy. For instance, Furbo is working out some of those details in its own projects, including one announced earlier this year with Google to install geothermal capacity near the company's data centers in Nevada. It also recently gotten involved in a DOE project in central Utah called The Forge, Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy. With the combination of policy changes and tech advancements, U.S. geothermal generation could reach 60 gigawatts by 2050, according to a 2019 DOE report. That means that geothermal can provide among 9% of all electricity generation within the U.S. compared to 0.4% today. This shows the potential for geothermal energy and how there's immense efforts to make geothermal energy a possibility as a renewable energy source or an increasing renewable energy source in the world. I have listed several sources of geothermal energy for you to take a deeper dive in as well. Those are all the technical topics I wanted to talk about today that you should be on the lookout for 2022. There will be constant conversations with geothermal energy, the continuation of fracture-driven interactions, CCUS and CCS, so carbon capture utilization storage or carbon capture. And you have, and you have induced seismicity. Once again, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.